Okay, um, welcome to today's lab. So today uh, we will set up our Jupyter Notebook instances on AWS SageMaker. Uh, we will also connect our GitHub repository, so our existing GitHub repository uh, to our notebook instance on AWS. So first, let's go to our GitHub account. And in the account settings, if you remember that in our, for our Cloud9, uh, we have a token. OK, so that's for the Cloud9. So right now, we don't need the token anymore. So you can just safely delete that one. So if you are no longer uh, going to use Cloud9, OK, so you can delete that token. And remember that the token was saved in a plain text on that uh, Cloud9 instance. So if you are still planning to use that one, so you can keep that token. And once you're done, just make sure that you delete that token. And for this class, we are going to offer this for the notebook on SageMaker. So we are going to create a new token. <coughs> uh, so I need to type my uh, password again. So for this one, I will, this is for the notebook. And again, we just need the default one, so that repo. And let's generate that tokens. And make sure you don't share this one. So that's why I hide this one. So, And I also copy the token. So I save that one to a, a place that uh, I, will, I can uh, copy and, and paste that one into uh, AWS SageMake later. OK, and the reason I'm, go I'm doing that is because this token will be um, hidden later. So if you come back later, you will not be able to see the tokens. All right, now we have the new tokens being generated and make sure you copy that one to to a temporary folder or to a temporary file that you are going to we are going to use that one later. And after you are done with this lab, make sure you delete your tokens uh, from your temporary file. OK, next, let's go to our AWS Educator account for this classroom. And uh, you can see here right now I have uh, spent less than $1 by using the Cloud9 editor. Uh, so that, that is very cheap uh, using Cloud9. So this time we are going to switch to a different AWS service. Uh, so let's go to AWS console. <clears throat> OK. Uh, so to use SageMaker, so normally we need three services. The first one is S3. So that is a solution for data lake. So later on this semester, we will upload data to S3 bucket and we will use notebook to read data from our S3 bucket. So first, let's create a bucket in S3. You can see S3 is here, but let's just type S3 just in case you did cannot find that. Um, click S3. And uh, I think I don't have any bucket yet. Again, bucket is just the logic container uh, of your data uh, to, to organize your data. So let's create our first bucket. The name should be uh, globally unique. So you might be very creative uh, for your bucket name. So here I use I. 241 and OK, so I use this one and hopefully this one uh, is available. Uh, we don't want the bucket to be public, although you can set, uh, set that one to be public, but we are not going to do that. Uh, you can also enable the versioning. So that means you can save different versions of your data. So which let's, let's also keep that one as disabled. Uh, you can also uh, encrypt your data. So uh, let's also disable that one. For advanced uh, settings, so let's also disable the, the object lock, etc. So basically, we are using the default settings. And let's create our bucket. <clears throat> OK, now you can see this bucket has been created. Uh, if you click this bucket, where you can upload the files. So just as you are using uh, OneDrive, Google Drive, uh, Dropbox, etc., so you can upload any type of data, or you can also add more folders within your bucket. Okay, so 
uh, we are going to upload the data later. So let's just uh, keep the bucket empty, which is fine. And the next, let's switch to another service. So remember, we mentioned in the lecture that so if we want the notebook instance to access the data on S3, so we have to create, we have to give our notebook that permission. And on AWS, we can use the IAM, so which is uh, identity and um, access management to to create those permissions. So let's click IAM. And because we are using the educator account so that uh, we can, I don't think we can create groups. Um, we cannot add users. I don't think we are able to do that. Uh, and, and I'm not going to try that. But we can create a roles. So roles are the permissions that to AWS services. Okay, so let's create create and row. And let's say we want to use SageMaker. Okay, so let's choose the SageMaker. So we want to create this row for the SageMaker and the next. So you can see now the SageMaker has the full access. And next, let's add tags. Uh, so uh, this is optional. So for example, type uh, education, so something like that, and the review. Uh, so you can give it a name for this one. So that is for my uh, notebook. OK, so this is for my notebook rules, which has uh, full access to the SageMaker service. So SageMaker is an AWS service that from there we can create our uh, notebook instance. So let's create this row. And now you can see the row has been created. So let's click that. And let's attach the other policies. So this row now has access to the SageMaker. We also want this row has access to S3. So let's type S3. And we can just give that full access, although that is not the best practice. So uh, because the best practice is that just give the the minimal permission as you can. So, uh, but for this class, so to simplify our lab, so let's just use this for service for access, and let's attach this policy. Okay, so now for this rule, we know that uh, the notebook rules, so it has access to the S3, so all the data in my S3 bucket, and also has access to SageMaker. Okay, so that's great. And next, uh, let's go to SageMaker. Okay, so that is AWS SageMaker. So the AWS SageMaker is a service to build and also train your machine learning models. And the reason that we want to use SageMaker is because SageMaker can host the notebook instances. Okay, and so, so now you can see right now I don't have any notebook instances, so we are going to create a notebook instance. Um, but before we do that, so let's create, let's connect our GitHub to this, uh, to our SageMaker. So let's go to GitHub repositories. And here, let's add a new repository. So we are going to use GitHub. And we are calling this one, so GitHub. OK. And we will also copy the URL of our repository. So let's go back to our um, repository. OK. And here, let's copy this HTTPS URL and paste that one. All right, and next we need to provide the credentials. So let's use create a new secret. And this is my GitHub token. 
and the username is your github username so mine is my gmail the password so the password is the is the uh, uh, token that we just created uh, on github okay so i just copied the token from uh, my notebook and i just paste it from github and now i paste here and i create this secret okay so now this secret has been um, created successfully so again we're using this github uh, that is our existing repository. So let's add this repository. Okay, so now we have a repository just being added, which has our usernames and also the tokens. And now let's go to the notebook instance. And let's create our first notebook instance. So notebook instance is like a computer that are hosting on GP notebook. Uh, so let's give name i241 for the instance type let's choose a medium one so that is a cheapest okay for remember that the the siege maker is more expensive than cloud9 so you have to be careful that uh, we are going to use the cheapest one and also every time when we are done with our lab make sure you stop that instance to save your credits okay so if you don't stop your instance and if you keep your instance running so you will run out of your credits very very fast all right so the IAM rules so you can see here we are using our existing rule so that a notebook rule that we just created and that one has access to our s3 bucket and also have the access to the seed maker for the network, we are using the default one. And here you can see GitHub repository. So here we are using the GitHub that we just created. Okay, so we are using the GitHub that we just created. And for the tags, you can also add tags like uh, type education, so something like that. Okay, so now we are ready to create our notebook instance. Okay, so this may take a few minutes, uh, so you can pause the video here, and also when your when your notebook is ready, and you can open your notebook. Okay, and uh, now you can see that my uh, notebook is ready. So now we have two options: we can open the notebook, or we can use open the lab. So let's first open the notebook. Okay, uh, because we linked our GitHub repository to this notebook. So you can see right now we downloaded our uh, uh, Python files from the GitHub repository. And if you look at the previous Python files, you can see we have our uh, Python code. And if you look at the readme files, you can see we have all those code that are uh, uh, downloaded here. Um, so now let's create our first notebook. So here we click new and uh, uh, we're going to choose a version so you can see version we have the python 2.7 python 3.6 etc uh, so in most cases the conda python 3 will be fine okay so let's use this one condo conda python 3. okay uh, so now this is the interface of the notebook Okay, and you can define a title, and also all the f all the code are organized as cells. So let's change the title. Let's call it lab. Uh, this is our lab ten. Rename that. Okay, and here you can see um, all the code are organized into different cells. So if we have this bracket so that means we're in the code mode and we can switch to the markdown mode okay and that is why that we're uh, spending some time talking about the markdown okay so let's first let's switch to the markdown mode and let's add our uh, headings so remember that one hashtag indicate the headings first notebook okay 
and we run it. And you can see we have the level one headings. And also remember that in the lab instruction, I also provide a demo notebook so you can follow that demo notebook. And now once you run it, they added a second line. So again, right now it is in a code mode. So now let's run some Python code. So let's print hello world. And now if we run it, you can see the output is uh, beneath this line. OK, and the line has a number in this bracket. That means this line has been executed. And if you run it a second time, you can see the, the line number has been changed. We can also define variables. Let's say a equals 3, b equals 4. And what it result that a plus b. And now if we run it, you can see right now uh, a plus b equals 7. So we have this output. OK, and let's also add another markdown syntax. So this time, let's add two hashtags. So let's test print. OK, and let's run it. And here, let's say print. Let's print that a variable. OK, and so now you can see that a has been printed out. And also remember that the sequence of running those cells uh, matters. So for example, if I tell that A equals uh, 5 in the next cell. OK, so let's say that we are going to define a new variable. Here, let's say A equals 5. So now if I run this cell, right now A equals 5. OK, so the cell of this cell after I executing this cell, a equals five. So now if I run the sprint function, that although this cell is above a equals five cells, but if I run it, you can see that in Python a equals five. Okay, so so the order that you are running those cells matters. So if you print C, you will have this error because C is not defined. However, if you say okay, C equals five. So if you run it in a cell 8, and now if you run this in cell 9, you can see C equals 5. All right, so that is how the, the order of the cells matter. And let's, let's also try some other uh, markdown syntax. So here, let's say we go to the markdown uh, mode. So let's say we, we want to create a list. So let's say one point, this is line 1 and two point this is line two three point this is line three and now if we run it so this will give us an ordered list okay so we we already mentioned that one uh, during our lecture so and if we want an unordered list we can use star art item one star item two and star item 3. Okay, so this will give us an unordered list. Uh, we can also define the URL. So for example, here we put the GMU, the, the, the word that in this um, square bracket. And we put the uh, real URL, so that HTTPS slash colon colon, uh, colon slash slash www.gmu.edu. Okay, so this is a real URL, and this is a word that be, will be displayed on, on, on our notebook. Now, if we run it, so we have this GMU, and if we click the GMU URL, now you can see we will be directed to this GMU website. Okay, so since we are in the GMU website, so let's also copy this image address. And let's go to our uh, notebook. So here, let's create, let's define an image. So this is a GMU image. So that is in this exclamation mark. Uh, square bracket is a text if the image is not showing up. And then followed by this parenthesis, where you just copy that image URL. And now if you run it, you can see you can put the image in your notebook. So that's very nice. So 
So in the future, so you can design that your notebook as a paper where it has your Python code, it has your Python output. They also have your uh, paragraph that you can edit your, your analysis, etc. Okay, uh, so finally, let's try to run some Python code. So the Python code is, the demo code again is on the uh, lab instructions. So I'm just now copy the code from the demo notebook. So here I'm going to paste this piece of Python. This is not a Python code. And um, this is what they call the magic command. That means that we're going to create visualizations from Python, and we are going to display the visualization on this current notebook. So let's run it. And you can see this is the star. So when there is a star, that means this cell is still being executing. And when you see a number, so that means this cell has been executed. OK, so this cell is finished. And next, I'm, copy, I'm going to copy the remaining code and paste to our Python code here. So here, basically, I imported the NumPy Python library, so which is a very famous data analysis library in Python. And I also imported the Matplotlab, which is also another very famous Python library in the data visualization. Uh, we will talk about those two Python libraries very briefly in our future labs. And those pieces of code just create a very nice uh, chart. So let's just run it. And also you can see that here that you can have multiple lines within a cell. OK, so now let's run it. OK, so here we have this very nice chart. All right, so that is our lab 10. So we just created our first notebook. We name it lab 10. We tried the syntax. Uh, mixed with our Python code. So we define variables, try the print functions. We also tried some different markdown syntax. And also we tried to create visualizations uh, by using a Python library. So now we can click, close this um, notebook. Okay, let's save it. So just make sure that every, uh, so we saved everything. So now let's close that. Uh, so now if we go back to our notebook instance, we can see we still have one notebook that is running. So we can shut that down. OK, so here we just created one new notebook. So as we always did, we want to upload this notebook to our GitHub repository so that we will be able to see those notebook in the future on GitHub. So if we don't have access to the SageMake instance, so let's close this tag. And now this is where we are going to use a lab. So lab is where we can organize our uh, notebooks. So let's open the Jupyter lab. And remember that we already linked our GitHub repository to our SageMake instance. Uh, so here, if we in the in this uh, lab, so if we go to the GitHub icon and you can see we have one notebook that is untracked so we add this click so we keep that track and also here we need a commitment uh, we need a comment to commit this change this is similar to the commit dash m and command so this is um, lab 10 and you can add a description so first notebook and let's commit and so do you want to add your name and also email so sure so this should be way and also this time I'm, I'm going to use my GMU email and I hit OK OK so that has been committed and finally so we need to push remember that is similar to type git push in the terminal in C9 cloud 9 so let's push that because we already saved our tokens and also username uh, when we add in our GitHub repository. So right now, we don't need to type the password and tokens um, again. 
OK, so that has been pushed successfully. So now if we go to our GitHub, OK, repository and also um, this repository. And we can see here the notebook has not been uh, published. So if we open it, you can see it's very nice that on GitHub, they are going to show you the final output of your notebook. So you can see all those uh, format and also images, URLs, and also even those visualizations. So this is also a very nice feature that so when you have done your notebook and you can publish that one on GitHub and you can share your URL on GitHub because sharing notebook on GitHub is free. But sharing GitHub, sharing a notebook on SageMaker is not free. OK, so now let's close the lab. And for this lab, you just need to again submit a URL on Canvas and before you leave, there's one more step that you need to do that is different from the Cloud9. So in Cloud9, the instance will be terminated automatically after 30 minutes. On GitHub, you have to stop your instance manually. So let's see, check this instance, action, let's stop. OK, do not delete. So if you delete the instance, you will lose everything from your instance. Let's just stop the instance. So when you stop the instance, the AWS will stop charging you the credits. And next time, you can just go back to the SageMaker and also you can just restart your instance. OK, and all your uh, notebooks, all your data uh, Python code are still there. So just remember that every time when you're done with your lab, make sure you stop the notebook instance. Otherwise, you will lose your credits very fast.